All right, let's um, let's get started. So today, uh, this is the um, fifth installment of of our webinar series, and we're going to talk about uh, we're talking about a whole bunch of data stuff today, uh, mainly as it relates to you know predict, predicting machine prices, uh, but we're also going to talk about uh, platform elements and 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 how we're looking to to share some of this this. Uh, data science we've been developing over the last couple of months. How we're going to share those uh, with you guys out there. So just some housekeeping to get started. Uh, keep in mind that this, uh, this presentation will be recorded. Uh, we will be sending that recording to you in the next couple of days. That way you, you have it if you want to go back and, and, and listen to it again or share it with other folks. Um, and then uh, those of you who have uh, attended before, know that um, we, we leave some time at the end for Q&A. So as, you're, as we're going through this uh, presentation, if you do have a question, feel free to enter it into the, the chat box that's part of the GoToMeeting application. And then at the end, when we're done, we're going to leave some time and, and uh, we'll be scrolling through uh, those questions and trying to answer as many as we can. So. Just a second as we try to, there we go. So there we go. So for those of you who aren't sick of my voice uh, by this time, uh, I'm Matt Ackley. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Iron Planet. Uh, and today I have uh, somebody much smarter than me. Uh, he is Ken Calhoun, who is our new uh, VP of Data Analytics. Uh, Ken and I uh, worked together uh, many centuries ago at this place called eBay. And Ken joined us recently at the start of the year uh, to really come in and start to. I mean, as as I talked about, uh, as I talked about in our first webinar, actually, if you were able to attend that, you know, the massive opportunity that we have, you know, in this space with the Iron platform to really, really start to take advantage of these trends that are shaping, you know, e-commerce today, right? And I think these trends are are, are coming to this particular, you know, the heavy, the heavy equipment uh, vertical, I think they're coming faster than, than we all think. And, you know, today we want to share the progress we've made in the next couple of months. And then, you know, also we want to, we want to start working more closely, you know, with both our buyers and sellers and, you know, how do we start to innovate around a lot of these concepts. So let me, I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit first and then I'm going to turn it over to Ken. You know, as, as I mentioned uh, in, in our very first webinar, and as we've talked about in a number of the webinars to date, you know, there are, you know, the, 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 the internet cannot be ignored, right? We've talked about search, we've talked about social, we've talked about mobile. Uh, we, we've, we've explored these concepts in detail. And, and, you know, I think, you know, as I was preparing for this webinar today, you know, I, I, I was poking around this weekend and I came across, you know, a couple of articles. And, you know, these are, sorry, these are U.S. focus, but, you know, if, 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 if you've been in the U.S. over the last six, seven years, you know what, you know, you've kind of seen what's been happening, right? You've seen the impact of Google. You've seen the impact of Amazon on traditional retail. You've seen the acquisitions Walmart has tried to make to, to keep up. Right, you've seen what eBay has done, even done in the heavy equipment space, and and I think what all of a sudden you know we're waking up, and we're seeing that you know we're seeing articles like this, right? You know, from the Wall Street Journal on Saturday, brick and mortar stores are closing their doors at a record pace, right? Change is happening; it can't be ignored. Uh, we have to figure out how to take advantage of it. Now, what I find about the 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 tweet from yes you know the tw this is Twitter you know so even how we get our news what I what I find interesting about the tweet from Jeff Jordan uh, for those of you who don't know actually Ken and I both know Jeff uh, Jeff is the former president of eBay and former president of PayPal he's now a partner at Andreessen Horowitz and he does a lot of investing in the in the retail space but what 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 his what, what he you know he's reacting here to the title in the New York Times. Right, is American retail at a historic tipping point? And I found his response actually kind of alarming. Right, no, that was years ago. And 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 I think you know it's like you know I think everybody's probably familiar with the 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 analogy of the boiling froth. 
right? So if the water, you know, if a frog is set and, you know, if you drop a frog into a, a hot pan of boiling water, the frog jumps out right away. But if you basically put a frog in lukewarm water or cold water and then gradually turn up the heat, the frog never recognizes that the heat's changing until it's too late, right? And I think that's the, that's the situation, you know, I think many, uh, many people in many industries find themselves in. And so, you know, our goal with these webinars, right, our goal with all the stuff we're doing at Iron Planet, right, is to help you, right, take advantage of these trends, take advantage of these changes, right, so that you can embrace them and use them to your advantage, right, in your business, right, whether that's doing some of this stuff on your own, right, so look at this as an education point, or whether it's using some of the tools and platforms and data type services that we're going to talk about today to help you get to, to this particular point. But, I mean, the key thing is this change is happening. It's real, and it's going to come to this industry. All right, so let's talk about uh, a couple of new things uh, at Iron Planet since we last touched on this subject back in the, at the end of 2016. So just recently, we launched uh, uh, on, our, on our website what we call you know, our, our platform solution suite of offerings. And what we're trying to do with platform solutions is once again, as, as, I've, as I've already talked about, is to take Iron Plant beyond just a place where you buy and sell equipment, but a place where, you know, we can become more of a strategic partner to you to help you manage your assets, right? And, and we've got a number of new solutions uh, that are now available that, we, you know, we'd love to work with people on. So the first one is, is, is something we call storefronts. And, you know, what we've noticed, uh, you know, over the years or, you know, over the year that I've been here at least, is that, you know, some of our sellers have, you know, they sell more items with us on a more frequent basis, right? And they're, they're just looking for a little bit more from the marketplace, right? And so, hey, how can I have more reporting? Or, hey, can you tell me how many people are looking at my listings? Can you tell me how many bidders are bidding on my listings? And so we created this product we called Storefronts. And so what it gives you, it gives you a couple of things. One, you know, it gives you a branded presence on Iron Planet, a place where we can direct traffic, We've talked uh, at length about the type of marketing and merchandising we do, but a place where we can drive traffic, whether that's traffic from Google, whether that's traffic from Facebook, whether it's our own internal traffic from emails, we can drive traffic and it gives customers that kind of branded experience. Secondly, on the back end, right, we give you added reporting. You know, we give you snippets of the reporting that, you know, basically we see day in, day out when we manage the marketplace. So, you know, this is, you know, this is basically, you know, pretty much free to you guys. Uh, if you're a seller that's, that's maintaining a certain level of listings and selling with us on a constant basis, you know, let us know. Uh, you know, at the end, we're going to give you guys a survey, but love to give you a storefront, right? Love to give you a sort of an established presence on our planet in addition to the additional reporting. Secondly, the, 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 the next solution we've just recently introduced. And, and, you know, a good way to think about this one is, you know, a storefront on steroids. Uh, so this is, this is for a seller uh, who is looking for a little bit more, who wants, who wants more control, right, who wants more data, uh, who wants to be, you know, more involved in, in their asset management process. And the best way to think about, you know, Marketplace Direct, right, is a tool that gives you this type of branding, you know, a little bit more of the branding than, than, than we had in the, um, in the storefront case. It gives you a little bit more control. Uh, we'll talk about how you'd be able to create your own listings, and it gives you more access to data. And then finally, it gives you some options around how you want to sell. Do you want this to be a private uh, type of uh, selling situation where you're selling only to buyers that you invite, or do you want this to be public? Right, where you, where you sell these items on the Iron Planet public marketplace. So kind of a dual faceted approach to, to having, having the ability to manage your own presence on Iron Planet. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, how this works, how the marketplace direct works. So, you know, basically what, what you have is you have the self-contained, you know, cloud-based administration module that allows you to go in and customize your own portal. You can add your own, as you see here in the example, you can add your own branding to, 
the you, you can you can basically create your own branding for your storefront page. You can add your own branding to listings. Um, you can you can determine your payment, shipping, and transaction terms. You can do it yourself. Say, hi, I'm going to collect payment. I'm going to I'm going to handle shipping terms, or you can let Iron Planet handle it. Um, as I mentioned, you can you can make this public or private, right? Where you you know, hey, I only want you know, let's say you're an OEM and you have dealers, you want to offer items to your dealing dealers first. You can make a private version of this and only invite your dealers, and only they can see the the listings and bid on them before you make them available to the public. Um, you can configure your own auction settings. I'll talk a little bit about that. You know, add your own text. You see a nice little dashboard here when you log in. So it's, think of it as like your own control panel uh, to Iron Planet. It's like you're in the cockpit, if you will, uh, for this particular offering. Now, I talked a little bit about you know, our expertise in, in our format. So with Marketplace Direct, Right. You have the ability to actually create your own listings that, that once again, either go live in your private marketplace or they can go live on the Iron Planet marketplace or they can do both. And I'll get to that in a second. So you can set your own pricing, right? set your own opening bids. You can decide whether you want it to be a reserve price. You can determine your own format. Do I want this to be an auction? Do I want it to be a reserve auction? Do I want it to be buy now or make offer, which is you know part of our new all-equip format? You know, you set the duration as you see here. So, you know, it, it, it's you, you have control over your own listings. And, and what we've seen is that there's a certain there's there's folks out there who who want to experiment, who want to who want to understand, who want to who want to have different custom flexible solutions. And this has proven to be you know a very very good experience uh, for those. We have, we have folks that are live and they're that are using this today. Um, at the same time, you can actually upload your own descriptions, photos. If, if you do your own inspections, you can upload your own inspections. If you have a, uh, a maintenance record, right, you know, a lot of times we see that that, that actually helps a lot from a, a buyer standpoint. That all can be uploaded and attached to these listings. And one of, one, of the, one of the interesting things, right, about all of this is that if you're offering, and, I, and, I, and, I should, and if you see this little snippet of screenshot down below, if you're offering this item, let's say, to your private, you know, to, to, to a set of dealers that you've invited or to a set of customers that you invited. You can, and let's say it doesn't sell, right, for whatever reason. You can then easily cascade it with the click of a button. You can cascade it over into the public Iron Planet marketplace. And that can either appear as any format you want, or it can go into one of our featured events. But once again, we, we work with you to give you this control. And then we work with you, you know, as you're going through this, right, as I mentioned, we've got 17 years of experience here in terms of how to price stuff, you know, when to run it, what's the best day to close it, right? You know, for instance, we have a, we have a company that, that does this, that they're in the oil and gas space, and we'll let them know, hey, we've got a cruise sale coming up next Wednesday. You probably want to list some items to coincide with that cruise sale because we're going to have a lot of oil and gas people on site. So it's that kind of partnership where we're trying to work with you to – you know, as I say, give you more control in terms of managing your assets, and that's really what this is all about. Lastly, you know, but before I before I turn it over to Ken, right, we're, we're starting. You know, I mentioned in the beginning, right, that, that we have all this data, right, and I've talked about this in the past. We have all this data at our fingertips, but this data is 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 obviously useless unless we use it, right, and and it's even more valuable to us if if we can actually work with with our partners, with our customers, to get them to use it. And so, one of the things we're doing with the development of these new platform tools, this is a pay, this is a this is a pricing page uh, from from our Marketplace Direct. When you load items into Marketplace Direct, right, you can load those items via spreadsheet or whatever. Right, you load them up there. We'll basically, as you can see in this case, we'll start to use some of the algorithmic stuff Ken is going to talk about in the next uh, the next section. To, to, to begin to price this equipment, to suggest what the actual pricing is. And then as you can see here, we let you dig down into some of the pricing data yourself. So this is, this is an example, right, of us giving you guys the data so that you can be more successful and that you can better run your business. And that's, that's basically what we're trying to do here. And, it's, and, and the other reason this is important, right, is there's a lot of data services out there, right? And, and we, we are aware of that. 
But the data without the context or the data without the ability to act on it is less valuable. And so when we talk about giving you the data, and Ken's going to go into this, right, we're going to give it to you in a way that we hope you can act on it. Right? And secondly, we want to give it to you in a way that has context. Right? So for instance, right, you know, the price of a machine is the price of the machine. It has nothing to do with the format that you use. Right? You know, when, when you use different formats, there are different things that, 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 that impact how buyers interact with the machines. And so, so what we're going to talk a lot about is, you know, how do we use the condition, the year, the make model to, to, to drive this pricing, right? And then once again, make this available to you, right, so that you can use it, right, when you run your business, you know, day in, day out. So, you know, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ken, and Ken is going to, you know, I introduced a bunch of concepts in the first webinar, and Ken's going to talk a lot about how we were, you know, basically we prototyped a lot of that back in 2016, and now in 2017, Ken's really starting to build this out, and we're going to show you some of the progress, and Ken's going to walk through some of the details there. So, Great. Ken? Thanks, Matt. Um, who would have thought centuries ago at eBay we'd be sitting in the same conference room <laughs> talking about not Pez, Pez dispensers anymore, no, exactly. we're talking about uh, bulldozers. Um, great to be with you all. Um, really uh, excited to share what I think is is very interesting uh, work that we're doing and 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 really interesting opportunities out of the future that Matt just described. So before I dive into the work that we're doing, I want to just you know. De define machine learning, and, and I'm pretty sure the person who came up with the uh, name machine learning was not in the uh, heavy equipment industry, because that makes it makes it pretty confusing for us. What is machine learning? And it's it's not telematics. I mean, actually, at, at, at some point, telematics will become a really interesting topic, but uh, we're not talking about making the actual uh, dozers and backhoes smart. We're talking about how we actually use data and analytics to transact in, in, in a better way. But let me let me talk a little bit about what we mean by that. So uh, machine learning really is, is using a machine, and in this case it's a computer, to really find relationships in data and to make predictions. And, and we talk about making predictions, the, the, the slide that Matt just showed with a price prediction on a particular piece of equipment, that's a prediction, right? We're predicting the market value of a, of a very specific piece of equipment is going to be uh, X dollars. Um, but it this also, you know, it takes shape in many ways and forms. I've just pulled out a few interesting examples here. One is, you know, the upper left corner. Uh, you can see uh, this is clustering musicians. So this is, you know, something that uh, uh, Apple Music or Pandora or Spotify or something might use in suggesting songs to you because you like uh, certain artists. There are other artists that are related to, to that artist, and so they might position those to you. I actually, I don't know if you can read the names on the uh, slide here, but I realized that I listen to music in the green box the upper right, my son is in the upper left, my daughters and wife are in the lower left, and I have no idea who's actually in the bottom right. I've never heard of any of these bands. Um, IBM, Watson, they trained up Watson, a supercomputer running deep learning to win Jeopardy a couple of years ago. You know, and this was a massive exercise to train a computer to, to pose the question, you know. Who is Bram Stoker? Uh, the winning question. So, you know, uh, computer wins that. And then, actually, an example that I think is actually gets back to the telematics topic is predicting aircraft maintenance. So, this is something that Rolls Royce and GE uh, and Boeing and others are starting to use with all the sensors that they've got on their equipment uh, to, to predict when, you know, there might be a, a maintenance issue and to be able to schedule that maintenance in a way that is economical and efficient. You know, if you're if you're flying uh, big jets to the Philippines, you know, United would rather fix that plane in San Francisco or Chicago than in the Philippines. And so anticipating that need is is really valuable to them. Machine learning has been around for a long time. The basic algorithms were produced in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. But what has changed uh, really three things. One is we have way more data than we did uh, last year, than we did 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So there's a massive amount of data. Second part is there's massive computing power that's available now. Um, and we take advantage of that. We use Amazon Web Services, which is a cloud computing platform. But basically, we can rent massive quantities of computing power now uh, by the hour. And that has just changed the ability to crunch this data that's now available. And now we have applications, right? We have people who want uh, to be offered up um, 
songs that they want to listen to. We have people checking maps to figure out what the best route is to get from point A to point B. So there's a lot of applications now that are also fueling the demand for interpreting data. So this has really changed a lot in the last five to ten years. We're hearing a lot more about this. But how does it relate to um, to Iron Planet? You know, really what we're trying to do is we're trying to you know, build a better set of marketplaces. Um, and, and Matt talked about the, really the first point on the left, which is to help our customers make really informed strategic decisions about how to manage their fleet. And, and we get a lot of questions coming in about, you know, should I keep, should I buy, which format should I go in, what's the timing, what are you seeing in the market? These are all really fundamental questions in terms of thinking about how you want to manage manage your assets. And you know, a couple key areas where we want to be able to deliver data here are one, market price trends, um, really understanding what what are the trends for um, categories of equipment uh, and controlling for things like age, make model, condition, et cetera, and really getting down to just this quarter versus last quarter, what's the change in price? What is it ha versus what's a, what's a change due to mix shift? Uh, the second point is just actually being able to attach a value to a piece of equipment, a lot like what Matt showed earlier. You know, we have specific pieces of equipment. What are they worth? What do we think they're going to be worth? I was speaking with one of our senior salesmen uh, last week and talked about the interaction we're having with one of our major accounts. Every year, we are helping them value tens of thousands of items, and it takes us weeks, maybe a month, to actually work through this huge list of, of, of items to value. What if we're able to do that almost with a push of a button and actually spit out those prices and spit, spit them out more than once? You know, prices move year to year. Things change a lot. But we want to be able to scale that up and be able to, you know, provide our customers with, you know, up-to-the-minute, up-to-date pricing information. That's all going to be possible through the development of the pricing model that I'll talk about in a moment. The second part is, is really about market liquidity and really well-functioning markets. And the way I like to think about it is, is this. Um, you know, we want to bring motivated sellers together with motivated buyers to transact at a fair price in an efficient way. And if that all happens, when that all happened at eBay, it was great. It was magic. And when that happens at Iron Planet, it's great. It's magic. Well, how can we help? One is making sure the prices are reasonable to start with. If, if buyers and sellers are way off on price, it's really hard to make magic happen. Uh, make, you know, putting the right items in front of the right buyers is, is really key. We have a lot of items. Uh, we have to make sure that buyers are really honed in on the things they're interested in. Making good recommendations in the way that, say, Netflix proposes movies and the way Amazon proposes items for us to, to, to buy. You know, we want to be able to expand our existing buyer base and move them into things that, that they may be interested in. And then finally, when we actually get into the nitty-gritty of either a fixed price or an auction format, you know, how do we make sure that it's getting the right level of exposure? You know, we're really we're, we're putting, you know, putting all the resources together in the right way to make sure that everything can perform as it should. Turning specifically to uh, to pricing, uh, you know what this requires is data computing and expertise. Uh, we have a lot. We have great data. I know Matt's talked about this in the past. Just to remind you of some of the data, we have 1.7 million users. In 2016 alone, we uploaded 4.3 million photos. We conducted over 100,000 inspections. We have something like six million bids that we've tracked since 2010. We've tracked a couple of million watch lists. This is when a buyer actually tags an item that they're really interested in and, and, and is able to keep that on their watch list and be reminded of it. We have a couple million of those that have been flagged since 2010. Uh, we, have, we have an enormous amount of data, uh, and, and this is what we're starting to take advantage of. We then have to make sense of it, and so we use you know, world-class leading statistical software package. R is the one that we use. Um, and we run that, as I mentioned before, on you know, uh, Amazon's cloud computing service. Um, you know, the, the current s s cluster that I'm using is analogous to having 16 desktop computers running simultaneously, crunching the numbers and coming up with the insights. So massive computing power to deal with this data. But I think, you know, the expertise is really where uh, is really the, th the third key component here, which is so critical. You know, part of it's it's the wonky. Uh, mathy stuff that that uh, that I bring, um, but part of it, but I think really the critical part is is actually the inside information and expertise of the folks on our team. You know, we have 
uh, profession, you know, professionals who spend all their time pricing. We have other folks uh, within inside sales, you know, equipment inside and out. We have the folks who manage auction management and our sales teams. All of these guys know equipment. Our inspectors. Yeah, and our inspectors, of course. And so they know machinery. Uh, and 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 so what we're able to do, I'll, you know, a little glimpse into how we work this process. You know, we and then, you know, we, we spit out prices, we spit out predict, predictions, and we go back. And yeah, we like the ones that that do well, but we really focus on the ones that miss. And we go back to those teams and say, hey, why, you know, why did the machine miss? Oh well, you you know, it's not picking up on this. This machine has this particular feature. Okay. We got to make that available to the machine so it can actually then price it in the next time around. So it's a very methodical, iterative process that t totally takes advantage of the vast wealth of, of expertise that we have within the company. And you know, just to give you again a little bit more insight into into what's going on here, we use you know there's there's a lot of kind of standard information that we use that we've collected over time. Things like you know what's the make, model, type, and category. What are the historical transaction values? We give we give the machine different windows, like 90 days back, 365 days back. Um, where is the item located? When was it manufactured? The age, usage, really important one is equipment condition. Like what what basic condition is this piece of equipment in? That comes from our inspection reports. Um, so who's the seller? Seller tenure. So that's all really kind of clear structured data that we uh, can take advantage of right away. Um, and you can see uh, over on the right hand side, you can see the impact for example, this is like the average impact of, of these variables. So as, a, as an item ages, of course, there's a, there's a big impact on price. Turns out there's a much bigger impact to the positive on younger equipment than there is uh, in terms of the depreciation for older equipment. Over here on the right, kind of interesting, you know, it matters what state you're selling the item in. Uh, the, the dot down here at the bottom is Hawaii. I think another low one is, is Alaska. You know, it makes sense. These are these are harsh environments located a long ways away from the 48 contiguous states. Uh, shipping's expensive, so you know that that affects prices. On the other hand, I think it's uh, the top ones are places like Colorado, Montana. I think Missouri's on the list. So it matters, right? Where where is this equipment located, and 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 also how does that correspond with where the demand is? We also, we look at uh, feature attributes. So, you know, this is where when we're working with the, the, the folks who really know the equipment well, this is where it really starts to make a difference, right? Is it an enclosed cab? Does it have a heater AC? Is there a ripper on that dozer? You know, um, what kind of hydraulics does it have? Is there a warranty? Is there a maintenance record, as Matt referred to? All of these things make a difference in the price. And you can see a couple examples here. Again, the, the average impact from a heater, yeah, it raises the the value, a ripper, yeah, it raises the value on average. But the really interesting thing is, and I, I don't know how to, how to sort of show this to you, but the, the machine is very specific, right? It is looking for a D6 dozer that's located in Missouri that is eight years old, that has a certain number of hours, and it does not have a ripper, but it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that is how it's actually establishing the price. That's how our humans establish the price, but it's a very laborious process. And the machine is attaching specific values to what, what, what each of these little quadrants is. Um, so, you know, we continue to push this, we continue to develop it and, and fine tune it. Um, and it's, it's exciting, the results that we're seeing early on. The, uh, the second basic pillar I talked about was making sure we, you know, we expose items to, to buyers. And so one set is, is really with our established buyers who have uh, longstanding historical buying patterns. We want to make sure that we put the right items in front of those folks. Uh, this is a model that we built looking at one of our top buyers. And it, it turns out you know, he's one of our top buyers, but he actually bids in auction. He bids on only about 2% of items, which, you know, could be like 20 to 40 items depending on the, the, the weekly auction. But, you know, that, that's a lot for him to sort through to actually find, find the right things that, you know, that he wants to bid on. But we were able to build a model which basically said we can propose 20 items to him and actually he'll probably bid on 10. So we improved the odds by 25-fold. And why is that? Well, I mean, when you start to figure out what's important to this particular buyer, he likes telescopic boom lifts. He likes articulating boom lifts. He likes items that are, you know, under about 12 years old uh, and, you know, other factors. And so by piecing all of this information together, you know, we're in a position to actually provide recommendations in the form of email, rec you know, emails. So, you know, here are items that are probably going to be interesting to this buyer as he goes into search. 
um, on site, we can we can present items that we think, based on the buyer's historical activity, they're going to be interested in. And I think this is really great for buyers, right? I mean, we Matt and I saw this at eBay, which was a massive uh, marketplace, of course, with many lower priced items. But you know, finding helping people find the right items in an efficient way is really important. Um, the, the, the next part of, of delivering buyers is really around recommendations. This is a screenshot for, uh, you know, for me for Amazon. So everybody who, everybody who's actually purchased on Amazon, raise your hand on the call. Okay. Look like about 93% of the people on the call have been on Amazon. So you've seen these emails. Uh, you've seen these homepage shots, uh, screenshots. You know, so I recently bought a drill. So I'm getting I'm getting some you know some recommendations for other drills I guess and, and bits and and I also did some home automation so I'm getting some recommendations on some other home automation gear that I might want to go after so what what is it doing it's looking at the categories of equipment that I purchased it's then also saying hey you know what um, Ken is kind of like these other users and these other users bought this other stuff. So we think Ken is going to be interested in buying that stuff, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're bringing kind of the same, same thing for movies, right, with Netflix, right? You liked that movie. You're kind of like, Matt's kind of like Ken. We kind of like the same kind of movies, and so therefore a uh, movie I haven't seen that Matt has may be of interest to me. Um, that's exactly what we're doing. And on this this, this shot, you know, um, you know, we've got an, an example here where we've got some bidders, 526763, has bid on compactors, dozers, but not excavators. Um, and the question is, you know, maybe they just haven't wanted to in the past, they haven't been interested or whatever. You know, the, the model will go in and actually predict what do we think the bid rate, this is this number is a bid rate, what do we think the bid rate is going to be for that user um, on excavators? And then, you know, uh, potentially offer those up as new categories, new pieces of equipment that might be of interest. So it's easy to imagine, right? You could be um, a buyer in asphalt and concrete equipment, but we might have a unique piece of gear that you haven't seen on the site, and wow, that'd be great to be presented that piece of equipment. Or, you know, you might have bought heavy um, iron and, um, uh, you know, not realized you could buy a pickup truck on our site. And we use this, you know, this is Matt jumping in. You know, when Ken, you know, I've talked to you, you know, a, a couple of times about how you know, we'll use Facebook or Google, right? So we use this information. You know, when Ken when Ken says, hey, you know, we think that the, this group of people based on, you know, this Netflix, like, recommendation knowledge or algorithm, you know, might be interested in excavators or might be interested in, in, in something else, we actually then take that data, right? And Ken mentioned email, and, and you know, we, we can target those buyers via email. But the beautiful thing about, you know, a lot of the new marketing tools on, on the web nowadays, you can take that data and, and load it into Facebook and load it into Google and load it into LinkedIn and, and, then, and then reach out to those people while they're not even on the site, but you reach out to them in a very sort of targeted and intelligent way. And, you know, it just gets to, you know, the, the power uh, uh, of online versus, you know, where we were 5, 10, 15 years ago when it came time to, you know, you know, merchandising this stuff. You know, I, I talk, you know, we merchandise the equipment, right? We do not, we don't really market the events anymore. We market the equipment. So we look through our inventory, you know, week in, week out, day by day, and we look at the equipment. And that is what, and then we use the, this data to figure out what equipment we need to market to whom. And it's a, you know, right now it's a weekly process, and we hope to get it down to an hourly process. That's sort of right. Yeah, and I, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have six, we have six million bids, and we recorded over two, two to three million watch lists since 2010. So we have incredible information on intent by buyers. And so the way we generate this data is we go back, we look, we figure out, you look at the categories, look at the users, what is that, what is that stated intent, and then you know we take advantage of that. So that's where this, this sort of data set is just incredibly power in it powerful and it now it manifests itself in actual marketing actions that we're taking on a weekly daily basis um, finally just turning to you know making sure that we get the right exposure to items we've also created some models which look at you know what drives success for a particular particular item this one was run for auction items um, we can do the same for fixed price format uh, and and 
um, really trying to understand, you know, what are the variables that we control, what are the variables that are you know, that, that we cannot, focus on the ones we can and make sure that we're sort of getting the right attention to the right items. So on, in this particular model, for example, we found out a couple of really interesting things. So one is, you know, as, as you would expect, right, but this kind of confirmed it, once you get two bidders on a particular item, and this is looking seven days out, that item generally performs really well. Once you get to four, it's really doing well. And actually, you know, beyond four bidders, um, you know, you're getting about enough action when you've got when you've got four bidders. Um, you know, more is better, but you know that that's a good amount. Uh, we found out the same thing with watch listers that um, you know getting to 15 watch listers is huge. Again, these are these are people who have said I am interested in this item. Please remind me of it. Please send me emails. Please um, make them easy for me to find when the auction comes up. Um, and then you know, 30 gives you a little additional benefit, but What's interesting is it kind of flattens out, right? So once you get to 30 watch listers, you don't actually improve the odds of the, the item performing um, that much more. And, and so it makes sense for us then to repurpose our efforts to items that don't have the watch list, to make sure that we don't over-promote certain items and we do promote the, the items that are that are deserving. This is good for sellers, right? It's getting visibility to their items. It's good for buyers too because we're, we're moving, we're, 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 we're exposing items to buyers where there's not, you know, maybe there's a chance to, you know, to get, get a good deal. And I think, I think one of the things is, as we look at this, and, and I go back to, you know, the, you know, one of my comments early on is, you know, you see a lot of, a lot of data sources out there, right? And, you know, to us, the, the data, you know, same situation when I ran marketing at eBay, we had massive amounts of data uh, and it allowed you to, to market and, and, and operate very, very effectively. But we noticed that when we just gave our data, you know, we, a lot of times third parties would come along and say, hey, you know, we can help you out with something. I go, okay, here's our data, sift through it. Give people the data without the context is very, very, very hard to, 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 to make use of. And, and I think, you know, specifically when you, when you look at, oh, you know, oh, you know, auctions perform less than, than other formats. Well, there, I mean, there is no, there, there's no context around, you know, a particular auction, right? Just running an auction is more complex than selling something on fixed price. I'll give you an example. We had, you know, we have an auction tomorrow. We had one of our sellers come up with 20 items today and say, hey, put that in the auction tomorrow. Well, those items have had no preview, no, no, any, so are they going to perform as better as, as, as well as something that's been up there, you know, 30 days? Of course not. You know, does that mean that, 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 the, that value of the item, you know, or that, that the auction didn't do its job? No, the auction did the job the seller wanted it to do, but based on the parameters, the, the context around, you know, how many people watched it, how many people saw it ahead of time, you know, is all going to affect the price, right? So all these factors, right, you know, having both the data and the marketplace combined allow us to, to really give that, that true, accurate view of what's going on in, in the market. Great point. So, um, so I've been talking a lot about, you know, kind of the, the here, the now, the sort of the near future, right? I'm talking around pricing, talking about the stuff we're doing today in terms of driving, you know, putting buyers in front of items, talking about how we're using these insights behind, um, you know, managing, uh, managing good results in the, in the marketplaces. But we're also thinking, you know, in a more forward-looking basis and, and more futuristically. And, and one of the things that I mentioned at the top of, the, uh, of my talk was, you know, we've got... Um, you know, millions of photos and hundreds of thousands of inspection reports that we're, we've uploaded just in, in 2016. Uh, that is a huge reservoir of data that we have to work with. And one of the really interesting, I think, ideas that's futuristic but not that far out there is the ability to use image recognition by combining both the photos and the inspection data. So, you know, just did a, a simple test um, to see what some of the current uh, technology could do with some of our photos. So Google, Google Vision has an API. Of course, Google, Facebook, others have invested heavily. Like Facebook, I think, is indexing billions of photos a day. Why? Because they want to tag your face in a photo. So now they've actually developed image recognition that's better than human image recognition in a very short period of time. The nice thing is these companies are actually making these APIs available publicly so we can actually take advantage of that expertise. So I used Google's. I dropped these two photos in there. Um, you know, without any specific training on, on these machines, you know, it already identified that it's likely to bobcat. Um, 
it was able to make sense out of the serial number plate. You know, it came up, you know, the words just sort of scrambled, but here's the, um, here's the serial number, and it's got a bunch of identifying information here. So what if we were able to, you know, take these photos, take the inspections, take our equipment data, train up a new model using these, you know, deep learning algorithms, the computing power that's out there in our pricing engine, to start to make sense of photos. What if, you know, what if you as a customer or an inspector shows up on site, takes four corner photos, and already the machine is starting to interpret, you know, what kind of equipment is it? Is it, a, you know, let's validate that it's that piece of equipment and the right serial number. Can we start to come up with, you know, specs around the make, model, age, and condition based on what what is it, what what the the machine is seeing, and and actually start to develop even a preliminary price that you know maybe a, a draft price almost um, based on on what it's seeing, and you know it's the ability to add eyes to our, our machine pricing. The one the one you know, one sort of lacking part of our, our pricing engine right now is that when I sit down with folks who are actually looking at equipment, one of the first things they do is they start looking at the photos. Unfortunately, the machine cannot look at the photos yet. So if we can train the machine to look at photos, um, that is going to be a huge step change in terms of our ability to, again, to make, you know, even, even better price recommendations. So, you know, a little futuristic, yeah, really far out there, no. This is actually stuff that I think is conceivable in the coming in the coming years, and, and you know could radically change sort of how we go from equipment on a yard to knowledge to listing. I mean, we could just just completely revolutionize that process. So anyway, um, uh, thanks thanks for uh, for listening in and 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 putting up with a lot of data and a lot of, of, of charts here. Uh, again, as Matt spoke about at the beginning, you know we're looking for some like-minded uh, customers, you know, who believe that data and data analytics can really, you, you can evolve, as Matt talked about, you know, the evolution of, of the retail space, you know, anticipate the evolution of our space, use data, use analytics, and help us actually build out some of these products um, to um, um, help, you, help you run your business even better. So I think with that, we are going to, Take some questions. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, yeah. So let's. Um, so you know, once again, reiterating what Ken said. Uh, you know, we are we are you know looking to to partner with you folks out there to to really really you know we want we want to navigate this road together, right? Because there's a lot of experience. There's there's a decent amount of experience inside Iron Plant. And there's a lot of experience outside Iron Planet, and we know a lot of you have been active sellers and buyers on the marketplace and. And you know we aren't you know we aren't the best holders of ideas, right? Ideas can come from anywhere. So uh, I think you know that survey is coming up. So please, if you want to take advantage of this, please please respond. Um, let's. Uh, we are going to jump into some questions. Um, uh, I will uh, uh, I will I will sort of moderate here and look looking online. Okay, first question. Uh, with all you know, can you take with all the data that Iron Planet holds in relation to pricing? In the future, are you looking to put out you know, sort of any trending pricing data, you know, publish any stats, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I'm, absolutely. As I talked about at the beginning of my, you know, my, my, my section, I think, you know, price trends are a really key component in terms of thinking about how to manage your, your assets. But the, the important point here is we need, to, we need to, to control for a lot of factors. We need to actually control for the, the mix of product that's in the marketplace at any particular point in time, the condition of that equipment, et cetera. The problem with really broad brush indices today is it kind of treats everything the same, right? Whether it's got the same condition or not, and it just simply records that, that data. So we're looking to develop indices, but to really be able to control with the data that we have, knowing what condition the equipment is, how old it is, where it's located, et cetera, really get to the core of how is time affecting price, not just the mix shift from the, the, the products that happen to be on the market during those particular periods of time. Okay, good. Um, next one, I am a seller. Um, how do you optimize my items and prioritize my equipment? You have thousands of items. How do you make sure mine do not get lost? Um, great, great, great question. I, you know, we get this one, we get this one a lot. And I think um, th this is actually one of the first things that, that we focused on you know, when I came to Iron Planet, you know, last year, uh, and, you know, 
you know, a little secret is, is Ken was Ken was working with us before um, uh, he uh, he started full time. The, the the you know Ken talked a lot about you know in in that in the presentation about using these using these models to predict how an item will perform. And you know one of the one of the beauties of, of the Iron Planet platform is is we have you know we can see at a very very detailed level every item you know how many bids it has on it how many watch lists it has on it how many people have looked at it right and 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 we'll we'll actually use we'll actually use uh, these models right and and if you look at our back end of our system you know seven days ahead of an auction three days ahead of an auction. You know, Ken will will go in and will and, and basically the algorithm of the run will spit out items that that need marketing attention, and 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 basically we take those items, we understand those items, and and we work it across all the all the marketing channels. Um, additionally, uh, we have you know when it comes to scheduling uh, auctions, right? We have we've begun to you know understand. You know, sort of the, the dynamics of, of how much inventory we have week in, week out, right? And working with the auction management team, which works closely with the uh, the marketing team, you know, we work with sellers, uh, we work with you know the auction management team and marketing all work together to actually find the optimal time to run that piece of equipment. So, you know, to give you a classic example, if you know it's tomorrow. And you know we already have let's just say 150 50 excavators running tomorrow. Uh, if somebody comes along and says, "Hey, I've got another 10 excavators," we'll probably say, "Hey, let's 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 push them out a couple of weeks, right? Let's let's you know make sure that 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 they, they sell at the right time so that we have the right amount of demand." You know, additionally, one of the, one of the, the 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 biggest factors I talked about, uh, you know, I mentioned a little while ago. One of the biggest factors is something we call preview time. Right, and and we have seen right on a pretty consistent basis that if you can bring and once I mentioned that we do this on a, a, a equipment by equipment basis, if you can bring the right amount of demand to that listing, we know it will perform in the auction. You know, we'll run into we'll run into issues where and it's not you know hey it's, look the seller needs to sell this right, but if the seller comes to us two days before an auction says hey I got to run this thing, you know you know we may not recommend it but we understand it and 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 we'll do it. Uh, but at the same time, we know that when an item is up on the site, when the item has, has seen enough traffic, when it, it performs incredibly well. And so we'll work with sellers, right, to, to help them understand that, to make sure that, that items go, you know, at the right time. Cool. All right. Um, uh, oh, uh, how close, uh, you know, how close uh, are the draft prices to the actual sales prices? Is the predictive prediction variable, I assume the predictive variable, mainly by condition? Yeah, good, good, good question. So this is a very scientific process. We, um, we very carefully track the performance of, of the model. We use a couple of different um, measures of accuracy. And uh, today we have a number of products that were a uh, number of make models that we're actually able to forecast very accurately. Uh, we have some that are, are, are less accurate, and often that has to do with how much data we have to work with, or or whether you know we haven't identified all of the attributes of that product, so the model's just not making uh, total sense out of the price variation. Um, the the predictive condition is a very important predictive variable, but it is not the only variable. And I think, as I showed in some of my charts, um, you know, features are an important predictor. Uh, item location is an important pr predictor. Probably condition is correlated with um, uh, age and hours, uh, so those those play in as well. Um, and and we're also you know we're doing a lot of basically text mining of of the attributes that that we have for our products to be able to tease out more and more uh, more and more variables. So condition is very important. And you know that's also there's another question in here which which asked about you know how important are inspections with respect to pricing? Very important. <laughs> um, because that's the you know we have you know we have people on site actually assessing condition, providing a, a an internal condition rating that, that we're able to take advantage of, and uh, the, the models definitely would perform much worse if we did not have that information. So it's a really critical variable, and, and as as well as those people on the ground actually validating 
the specific features and, and other aspects of the condition of the of the equipment. So somewhat related, you talk about uh, your own data, but do you do you do you pull in any other data uh, from uh, other companies? So um, yeah, we are uh, we are aware of, of the data that is out there in the other marketplaces, and, and there are many, right? Um, but very interestingly, uh, our data so far our data helps us the most. Uh, so far, our data is the most productive in coming up with accurate predictions, and the reason is we know a lot more about these products, right? We don't have inspection reports on other people's equipment. We don't we don't know that equipment well. What, what we do know is our own equipment, and and with hundreds of thousands of listings and millions of photos and inspection reports, you know, our ability to mine very deeply our own data uh, has been the most effective to date. So if I could channel our current president, we have the best data. Our data is just the greatest, the most absolute. No. Anyway, just, just joking there. I, I think you know it goes back to what I think a little bit goes back to what I was talking about too. With you know from a contextual standpoint, if you know your own data, right, and you know the context that data is used in, it it, it does perform the best. Um, uh, all right, let me ask. Uh, okay, here's a question about um, here's a question about private marketplaces. If I want a private marketplace, what support do you offer me as a seller in relation to set up and ongoing support? Yeah, so that's that's a um, you know that, that's an interesting that, that's a great question. So as we you know as we get into you know building out you know these platform capabilities uh, at Iron Planet, you know you know going from a, a a a company that just sells things to a company that offers our buyers and sellers tools. Uh, to help them manage their business, you know, we've we've begun to figure out how to work more closely, you know, with those folks who are using these tools to get these things set up and running correctly. So, you know, for instance, when it comes to we have an entire you know auction management team here, um, you know, in a sense that that's got years of pricing you know capabilities, scheduling capabilities. So we'll work, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we'll work with a with 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 our clients to say, hey, here may be the best time to run this auction, or you know, here here's the best way to price it. You know what? You know, for those you might want to use, um, you know, for that type of equipment you might want to use make offer or fixed price. Uh, we help you get the things set up. We we train you on how to how to use the software to to list the items. And so you know, I think that that's um, uh, you know that's the type of of help and support we give you when it comes to 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 setting these. Uh, Setting these marketplaces up and and, and operating them, uh, you know. In addition, you know, we'll help you with some marketing support as well. You know, specifically if you're trying to reach out to your own dealers, you know, we're happy to send emails uh, and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so you know, let us know. Uh, you know, early days on this stuff, but so actually because it's early days, we're actually involved quite heavily uh, in in terms of um, um, getting our sellers up and running. So let's see, next question. Um, I personally see centralization, so to say, of equipment in example, a complete floor plan of equipment per job for a contractor and upon completion, a complete liquidation. Do you um, do, do you see predict something similar? Let me see if I understand that uh, uh, question appropriately. Hold on, I got to change my eyes. I personally see a centralization to say equipment example, complete floor plan. You know, I think if, if you know, I think I understand the question. If I were just to, uh, uh, you, you can you can you know take this you know very very far. You know, I think Ken talked a little bit about um, you know image recognition, um, in the sense that uh, uh, you know it's something we see in the next you know six to nine months is, is something becoming a very very viable tool uh, in our in our toolbox. I think if you you know fast forward. Even further, right? All right, I'll, I'll shift to a funny story that, that's making its rounds uh, around Silicon Valley. So, uh, two days ago, a man was arrested in a parking lot in Mountain View for assaulting a, a robot. Uh, that basically, it's, it's a robot that that roams around a mall type structure and um, uh, sort of looks at license plates on cars and and you know looks for bad things going on. And, and somebody. Uh, Drank a little bit too much and assaulted this robot and and got arrested, and and the joke was, you know, we now know the moment that we can.
point to you know way forward in the future when when the when the robots and machines actually take over. This was the moment that actually started it all. This is the moment that actually pissed them off. Um, you know, so I thought that was kind of a funny story. But I think you you know you get to where you know we're going here, right? You get to where you know okay, I get a job. Uh, you know, it, it's all you know, it, it's all planned out in, in a way from you know software in a sense. You know, the machines needed for the job are all determined by software. The time the job's going to take is all determined by software. What the machines are going to be worth after the job is done is all, all determined by software, and then automatically gets you know sold or repositioned to somebody. Yeah, I mean, can, can is that conceivable? Yeah, I think that's conceivable, and I think we're getting you know it, it's pretty far out there. But you know, if you look at the the pace of change, right? If you look at, I mean, we're sitting here, you know, I mean, ten years ago we didn't even have the iPhone. Right and 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 what the what mobile has done in ten years are we going to be in a, in a in a situation where you know things progress really really rapidly right and you know folk, things like you know deep learning and artificial intelligence are going to have to play a bigger bigger role in our lives and our work yeah that's going to happen I can take the next All one right. so there's uh, how does the fact that your product is of higher quality so uh, than your competitors because of your condition reports and photos affect your data. So I think it's, you know, how does, how does the, basically, the quality of the make, uh, the, the manufacturer of the goods affect the price and the algorithm? Well, we use make as a variable, and it's an important variable, uh, and it is, it is predictive. And the, the way that works into it is not so much that we've made any judgment about what's the best product out there on the market. You know, if you took the same product side by side with a competitor's product, exactly the same hours, same location, blah, 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 same factors, um, it's reflected in the market price, right? And so that's what we're picking up on. So the, the, the beauty of the machine learning is that you can feed it in a variable like make, and it will start to distinguish among the manufacturers about which 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 manufacturer uh, is is more valuable or less valuable, controlling all the other factors. It's kind of like what we were looking at with the state. You know, it's like you have the same piece of machinery in Hawaii versus you have it in Missouri. It's worth less in Hawaii than it is in Missouri. Uh, and so that's exactly what the the models and the algorithms are able to, to tease through. Uh, I can I can take the next one too. Have you been able we'll to make this the last one? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're just about up on time. Have you been able to relate macroeconomic conditions to changes in supply demand shifts in the industry? That's a great question and a place that we want to go. For now, we've just been re again really focused on our own data. Uh, the thing that we are doing though is that we're keeping the data really fresh. Uh, we are basically loading. You know, our auction results in on a weekly sort of monthly basis. So the machine. Uh, when it's doing its pricing, it's looking at the latest results. So if there's a trend in the market, um, we are feeding that that into the in, into the algorithms to come up with the prices. I think there is some interesting stuff that could be done, particularly on the price trend side of the of the um, equation. Uh, you know, looking at yeah macroeconomic trends, construction indicators, um, you know, equipment manufacturing. I think there's some things that we could look at. Yeah, predicting is a is a tricky business. <laughs> um, so I think where we think the biggest bang for the buck is let's give you the latest up to date information about what we're seeing in our marketplace, tease through all the factors, and let's go from there, right? And as sort of you know, uh, we we can then can sort of look into the crystal ball and try to figure out what we think is going to happen in the future. Cool. I think that's a great place to end it. So you know, once again, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, you know, we have our next session coming up on, on May 31st. Uh, we're going to talk about shipping, uh, which is another important element of making an efficient marketplace. So, uh, once again, this has been recorded. Uh, so, you should get notification in a couple of days uh, with, a, with a link to, to the recording. So, feel free to uh, pass it around, share it with your family, that sort of thing. Um, Ken and I would really appreciate that. And with 